there's much more to model railways than just the trains and the track. The whole hobby has also become about bringing miniature scenes that the railway passes through to life. This is done by placing trees, lights, people, and of course, decast metal vehicles. A bit like this one. And that is why I'm making the series Rock and Sail Auto Car. Over the past couple of years, I've gathered a fair amount of model railway vehicles, ranging from police cars to taxis and buses. All come in different shapes and sizes and serve different purposes, but today I'm reviewing a new acquisition, an AEC Regent fire engine by Atlas Editions, which I acquired at the grand bargain price of £1.99, and with it is a bunch of adverts persuading me to spend more, which I'll ignore, but I also got a booklet about the fire engine and a keyring, so on, lo on that note, let's get it out of its box. So here it is, pristinely packed, and still with its plastic wrapping around it. As you can tell, this is quite a nice looking box, and uh, it's also been very well designed so that the uh, fire engine remains intact and also the packaging around it remains intact. As you can see I'm sort of struggling to get the, the wrapping undone. That was that bit unwrapped and now we're left with this cardboard box which does look very nice and all, this bit here is some sort of transparent plastic very nicely designed and uh, if we undo the flap here as you can also look very carefully, there's a bit of a background there, so it looks the part even when it's still in the box. Now if we just carefully push this out, there, and it's even got its own little display case. If you were to be collecting these models, then you might want to keep it in the case like so, but I'm not. I am just going to get this out and put it on the layout. So, next step, remove that, uh, remove the top part. And after all that faffing about, it appears that I have hit a design flaw. Take a look at this model. In order to remove it from its base, I have to unscrew it. But look at the screws. They are incredibly unusual, and I do not have a screwdriver that would be able to remove them, and I'm pretty sure there will be many people that will be just like me. So it appears we'll have to continue the review with this model on its base. Oh well. Thankfully, to make up for this inconvenience, this fire truck has an incredible wealth of detail, especially considering the fact that it didn't cost me much more than a Hot Wheels car would. Just look at the hose pipes to start off with. These look so realistic that I was almost convinced there wasn't a plastic moulding. Oh, and uh, note that those are plastic fittings on a decast model, because such a wealth of detail, like these spoked wheels that even spin around, just cannot be achieved in me metal at such a low selling price. And there's more. Take a look at these finely printed names and badges printed on the sides, once again, something that just could not be achieved by hand. There's even separately fitted bells at the front. And like many exceptional models that I will review on this channel, the list of detail goes on and on, all to make the finished product just look more amazing. Too bad I just can't remove it from its base and place it on the model railway layout at this moment. Even so, at such a low price, I still strongly recommend it. 
Oh, and did I tell you that this comes with a keyring and information booklet? This booklet tells you everything you'd want to know about the real fire engine this model is based on. Simply brilliant. Next time on Anthony Railway B, I will be talking about a vehicle from Hornby's series of scale autos, a model of the Humber Super Snipe and painted in the fictitious Scala Estates paint scheme. Altogether, it makes for a very nice vehicle to feature in the video. But until then, thanks for watching.